In this last video, we're going to talk about bounding box as a pivot point, and we're also going to talk at the end about hotkeys and why you may or may not want to use them. We're going to start out, I'm going to uh, go to top and ortho. I'm going to move my cube over. Deselect, and uh, let's make a UV sphere. And I'm going to move that up. And deselect. And uh, let's make Suzanne the monkey. And let's rotate her so we can see it. Rotate X, negative 90, enter. All right, now we have a bounding box pivot point. Which is fine, except uh, we don't really see anything. And we can switch our display to bounding box. But then we can't actually see our objects. Sometimes that's fine. Sometimes not so much. So we will go back and set this back to solid. And I'll show you a little trick. For each one of our objects here in object mode, we can go over to our object data and we can come down and down here you'll see display and a little bounds box and we can check that and it will display the bounding box and still display our object the only difference is we have to do that for everything on here in the case of our cube our bounding box is exactly the same as the edges of our cube that's all well and good alright so in bounding box, it's going to be an awful lot like median, except you're working with a bounding box. If we hit rotate on Suzanne here, it's going to rotate around the center, just like you'd expect. And if we wanted our bounding box to rotate around a different center, then we would have to move the origin, just like for any of our others, and make our object center not the center of our mesh. The difference is, with bounding boxes, it's going to average the actual squares, location. So if we grab all three of these, we can see that now it's looked at the three cubes and average where that center is. And that all works just hunky-dory. If we go to our cube, go to edit mode, Subdivide a few times. We'll zero in on this a little bit. Again, it's going to treat vertices, edges, or faces like they have a bounding box around them. So if we select some vertices, we've got this one. We'll grab one down here, here, maybe over here. So it's looking at this box that would fit around all four of these, not necessarily the average between these actual points, but if it had to make a box around all of these, it will find that center and allow us to manipulate those. Exact same thing if you use edges, or in this case we'll do some faces. We're in between what would be this six-face box. If we had one way over here, now our box would fit a 4x4 four four cube area, so it's centered. If I throw one down here, it's slightly off-centered because we've made it a 5x5 five five area box. And then otherwise, it pretty much operates like median. All right. Last but not least, I want to talk about the hotkeys for this. Now, we have three hotkeys for five pivot points, and this is where it gets kind of sticky. Right now, we're in this one. If we go back to our median, which is what we're defaulted at, everything's fine. If we hit the period, we go to 3D cursor. Now, if you look up the documentation, the hotkey for the bounding box center is also period. 
So even if you use the period to get there, depending on what you want to do, you've only got a 50-50 chance of having the one you want and then having to come down here and change it anyway. Now that would be fine, except if we want individual origins or median and we hit, uh, say, I think it's control period. Yeah, control period. That gives us individual origins. That's what's also listed as the hotkey for median point. And then alt period. Is it alt period or shift period? Yeah, alt period. Just got to hit the keys, right? Gives us our active element. So if you want active element, alt period works fine because it's assigned just to this one. But you can see where that's a little confusing and a little messy. And it's kind of like our set origin, which is shift control alt C. It's just easier to come over here and get it. And in this case, same thing. It's just easier to come down here and pick exactly what you want. All right. That covers everything for pivot points and closes out this short but valuable chapter. I'll see everyone in the next one.